everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Penny. I am a master esthetician in Portland, Oregon, and I'm excited that you're here with me today because this video has been a long time coming. I have been testing sunscreen for the last couple of months. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I've shared. I've been testing sunscreen exhaustively, you guys. I've tested probably 25 sunscreens so that I could bring you my number one best mineral sunscreen and my number one best chemical sunscreen that will help you with fighting the UVA rays. All of these sunscreens did a great job of helping me not burn, but I really was most interested in protecting my skin from aging, DNA damage, collagen damage, melanoma and pigment. That's what I was looking for in my sunscreen. Now, I just for reference, I am 45 years old. I have normal to dry and dehydrated skin and I definitely battle melasma. I wanted to bring you more than that in this video. So I did ask a couple of my friends here on YouTube to collaborate with me. I asked Melanie from the channel, Mr. Kong's mom, and also Jennifer from the channel, Jennifer Joyce Beauty, if they would be willing to make sunscreen videos as well, because they have different skin type than me. And they both agreed. Both of these ladies have become friends of mine outside of YouTube. So I can confidently say that they are amazing references. Melanie, I've actually treated her at work, we have had lunch, our children have met, and I can tell you that what you see is what you get. She is authentic as they come. So I trust her opinion. I really, really trust her recommendation. Jen is a pro makeup artist and she is also a hairstylist in Southern California. You guys, she is a wealth of information and knowledge. So if you have not checked out her channel, I really, really encourage you, especially if you have her same skin type. She does so many videos that are geared toward people with aging skin that is oily and that is a tough challenge. So I hope that you will check out both of these ladies if you haven't already. And I definitely think that you will appreciate their opinion and their recommendation. So let's get started. I whittled down probably 25 sunscreens and I have two recommendations for you. But what's more important to me is that you get some ingredients that you know when you pick up any bottle at Walgreens or at Sephora or wherever you are shopping when you're searching on Amazon that you know the ingredients that are a must have if you are concerned with aging. So let's discuss the, the two different types. We have physical sunscreen and that is going to be your zinc oxide and your titanium dioxide. Physical sunscreen is also called mineral sunscreen. Interchangeable means the same thing. You put it on and it immediately is protecting your skin by reflecting those sun rays. Now the pros of physical sunscreen is it's usually less pore clogging. It is usually good for sensitive skin. It's usually good if you have acne and it works right away. The negatives is it can leave a white cast. It can be hard to rub in. It can be greasy and sometimes it doesn't play well with makeup. Now, when you are looking at physical sunscreen, if you decided that that's the type of sunscreen you want to use, what is paramount is that it has zinc and the higher the percentage of zinc, the better. Titanium dioxide is a great ingredient, but it is only good on the burning rays. That's all it does doesn't protect you against the aging rays. So the zinc is the filter that you're looking for with aging. Now, the thing about zinc is it's actually not that fantastic of a UVA filter, but it does filter UVA. So that's why it's really important that you look for higher percentages of zinc. So the highest percentage of zinc that you can find, the more protected you are going to be against UVA. Now, it's also important to know that the FDA does regulate sunscreen like a drug. So when you see SPF, the sun protection factor, and it says 50, that means that you are 50 times more protected from burning than you would be if you wore nothing at all. So yes, SPF is important, but only for burning. That's it. So it's really, really important with the physical sunscreen that you look for a high percentage of zinc because that is how you're getting protected from aging rays. Okay, when we move over to chemical sunscreen, at least in the United States, it's really important that you look for one thing and that is avobenzone. Now, there's lots and lots of different chemicals that are in these chemical sunscreens and I don't know about you, but I mean, there, there's a list of them. Well, they're all good at protecting you from burning, except for avobenzone. Avobenzone will protect you from the aging rays. So no matter what, when you pick up a sunscreen, it had better have zinc 
or avobenzone in it, or you are not being protected against those aging rays. I just really, that's the information that I want you to have the most. Now, when we're talking about chemical sunscreens, the pros of chemical sunscreens are that they go on, they're cosmetically elegant, they often play well with makeup, people like to wear them because they, you know, they're, they're just so much nicer in consistency than their physical counterparts. The problem with them is they are not photostable and they often are not that great if you have acne, they can be pore clogging and they also aren't that good for our environment. So you've got that on the chemical side. Other thing is if you don't live in the United States, you have access to a lot more filters than we do and you have access to better filters and the number one filter that it, everybody could look for in their sunscreen is Tinosorb. If you live in Europe, Asia, or Australia, you definitely wanna be looking for Tinosorb in your sunscreen. It is a chemical and it is the best filter for UVA, the UVA rays. And guys, it is totally photo stable. I mean, so much more photo stable than avobenzone. Not only that, but when Tinosorb is combined with avobenzone, it actually makes avobenzone better. So if you are one of those fortunate people that has access to Tinosorb, then I highly, highly encourage you to look for it as an ingredient in your sunscreen. What I am going to do is in the description box, I'm going to link an article about Tinosorb and underneath that article, they list a ton of different sunscreens that you should have access to if you live in Europe, Asia, or Australia that contains Tinosorb. It might be just a great reference for you so that you can can, you know, find some sunscreens that contain this fantastic UVA filter. Now, as far as us here in the United States, I whittled this list down to my number one mineral sunscreen, and that is by Tizo. Now, this one is 20% zinc oxide. And what I do like about this one, you guys, is the consistency is really nice. I am gonna tell you the one downside is it's really messy. I can't quite, I, it's got it to do with however this goes in. And so there is that. I'm overlooking it because it's such a fantastic sunscreen. Now you can see it's not quite white, but it's not like it's super, super tinted and you do have to rub it in, but it, once it rubs all the way in, I feel like it's the least white cast of all of them that I tried and it leaves your skin feeling really nice and hydrated, but not greasy. Now, I will say that I still had to let this set for probably 10 minutes before I went on with my makeup. I do that all the time with my sunscreen anyway. That's just what I do. And it was beautiful under my makeup. And I feel really, really confident. It's an SPF of 40, and I feel great that it is a zinc oxide 20%. So this is definitely my number one mineral slash physical sunscreen that I have found. I am gonna list in the description box all of the ones that did not make the cut. And I am telling you guys, there are sunscreens from Walgreens, Target, from Sephora, from, you know, high end. I mean, I have a ton of sunscreen that for one reason or another just didn't work. And um, some of them, it was just the, the, the zinc and the titanium, they were just too low. The percentages were too low or there was too much titanium dioxide, not enough zinc oxide. I, I really, really want to be smart about my sunscreen now. I want to fight that pigment inducing ray, that UVA ray. Okay, and my number one chemical sunscreen is actually called HelioCare. This is an SPF of 50. And guys, this is something that I actually ordered on Amazon and I live here in Portland, Oregon in the United States. And this contains Tinosorb. It is made in Spain and they shipped it to me. It got here in two days and to be honest with you, I was under the impression that we weren't even able to order a sunscreen with Tinosorb, and that's definitely not the case. This is a beautiful sunscreen. It was around $25. It has a very light tint as well. It does come in two colors. It comes in light. It has a really slippery consistency. It comes in, this is light. It comes in light and it comes in brown. And I will tell you that I did order it in the brown as well, because my idea is I'm going to cocktail them to have the perfect color all year long. And it does just melt into the skin, but above all else, the fact that I can actually put an SPF of 50 and Tinosorb on my skin, I can't explain to you how excited that makes me. Tinosorb beats out zinc. 
it beats out avobenzone. It's just a fantastic, fantastic filter. And the fact that we can get our hands on this in the United States, it makes me elated. I, I can't, I could not wait to share this with you guys because I just think that's what we should be doing. Now, if you are completely against putting chemical sunscreen on your face, totally get it. This is definitely a chemical sunscreen. You should opt for one that is a really high zinc oxide. So now that you have my recommendations for a physical and for a chemical sunscreen, I thought that I would share just a couple other things that I think are super, super important. The first thing is I see people all the time in the treatment room that when I ask them in a consultation uh, about their SPF, they will tell me that they wear SPF in their makeup. And you know, people ask all the time, like, is it okay if I just wear it in my makeup? Oh, I wear it cosmetic CC cream SPF of 50. What I really, really want you guys to know is that in order for you to get the SPF that's on here, this one says SPF 40, right? In order for me to get that SPF of 40, I need to use a quarter of a teaspoon on my face and on my neck. So to illustrate the foundation thing, I wanna sh show you what a quarter of a teaspoon would look like with a foundation. Now this is Clay de Peau SPF of 29. In order for me to get that SPF 29, there it is. Can you even imagine putting that on your face? No. So when you ask if you can use your makeup as your SPF, ask yourself if you would wear whatever makeup it is, would you put a quarter of a teaspoon on? Along those same lines, I am definitely a huge advocate of these little powders that are SPF. Now this is the Super Goop 100% mineral and this one is SPF of 45. The important thing to know is that when we put this on, it is actually not an SPF of 45. In order for it to be an SPF of 45, we would have to cake this on to the point that none of us are caking it on. So this really is just an added bonus and you know a touch up during the day to give us just a little bit more protection and it is definitely better than nothing these are just never meant to be standalone and this applied over a makeup with an SPF is still not enough it is definitely just a touch up during the day and it's better than nothing but I think it's really really important to know the amount of product that you need to be using on your face to actually achieve the number on the bottom and it's quite a bit it's more than any of us would ever think and so it's important for us to have that information and I think once we know that we'll use a dedicated sunscreen and use these other things like makeup with SPF powder with SPF just to augment the sunscreen that we put on as a dedicated um, tool now I hope that this video was helpful for you guys I hope that what you take away from it is some ingredient you want zinc or you want tennis orb or avobenzone in your sunscreen or else all you're doing is protecting yourself from burning and that's fantastic but I think most of you who are watching this are interested in protecting yourself from aging so if you are fighting pigment like I am, it is imperative that you have one of those ingredients or all you're doing is not burning. We're not helping ourselves against, you know, fighting that pigment. Again, I hope that this was helpful. I hope you guys will check out Melanie and Jen's videos. I look forward to seeing you guys in the Friday Q&A this week. I've got some great questions and I'll talk to you again very, very soon.